The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 9th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to all know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Now, send it early, please. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you get all the U.S. indices that we track trading to the downside. Dow's off 100 points, 3 tenths percent. S&P, 6 tenths or 24 points. NASDAQ, 100 off 1.5% or close to that. Same for the Russell. That's 185 and 28 points, respectively. The semis are down over 4%, 133 points there. The trendies are off 75, uh, 74 points. That's a half a percent. We've got gold trading out at 1807. It's up just slightly, two bucks. Silver is off 17 pennies, trading out at 2043. Lights recruit is up 65 cents. 91.42 is the print there. Natural gas trading out at 784. That's up a quarter. And a 30 year treasury is off five ticks, trading out at 142.13. Lead the charge. Dollar wise, the upside this morning, we got Shockwave Medical, 37 bucks, 16 percent. Quailis is up 12 bucks or 10 percent. Elevance Health up two percent, nine uh, almost ten bucks. Constellation Brands up eight fifty, nearly four percent. McKesson Corp up eight bucks, that's two percent to the upside. To the downside, it's Magic Empire Global Limited up ninety two bucks or seventy seven percent. Now that is getting wallop. Mercado Libre down forty five bucks, four percent. Lamb Research off nearly forty dollars, seven and a half percent. Azimel Holdings down twenty nine bucks, five percent there. So we got plenty of movers and we have plenty of shakers. But first, let's go take a look at these markets. What are they doing out here? So let's switch over to the uh, daily time frame equity future charts, and each of them uh, have uh, well now they each of them are showing topping patterns. Let's get over to this screen right here. In the upper left, you've got the ES Mini. What you'll notice is yesterday uh, marked a TD9 count top. That pattern is complete today. And that suggests when you get a top out here, that price should head back and test its oscillator and change line. Now, the important thing about the oscillator and change line with regard to the trend that is in place right now, the momentum, you can see how each time, once price got above it, that was on June 23rd, any pullbacks have found support at that line, whether it was red or green. Green line is a more bullish line. So price, what price should do is pull back and test that level. What I don't know is whether that level will hold. Right now, the ES Mini oscillator and change line is printing at 4088. You got to use that. It's going to move up and down, you know, a few points or what have you. But that becomes a price target. Now, what you don't see on this chart here, and for good reason, and that good reason is I'm using my advanced Doppler tool. I've got a tool that is a leading tool to identify new profiles that are attempting to form. The ES Mini doesn't show on this chart here, but the ES Mini does have a new profile that is attempting to form. That support level is at 4091. So we're expecting that price, and that's where the buyers are lined up. We have not seen since this rally, we have not seen a close below the bottom of profile. So if this rally is going to continue, then what we should see is this area, the area is 4088-ish to 4091, hold that support. What happens if it doesn't hold, Steve-O? Pretty simple. 
If we see a close below that level, that would then suggest to us that price may pull back to its breakout area. The breakout area is established by that TD9 count, and that's at 39.38.75. But first, we've got to take a look at that 4088-ish range. The NQ generated a sell the D point pattern on Friday. It will not, uh, at least at this stage of the game, does not look like it will form a TD9 count pattern. Uh, price needs to close above bar number five today, and we're well below that. Doesn't matter, you got the topping pattern in place. So the NQ is something we really want to watch because its first target, much like the ES Mini, you can see how that red-green line has held its support on any move lower. If the bullish trend is to continue, then that level should hold. What is that level? Great question. I think I have to expand out the chart to give you that number. So as we expand out the chart, we can see it's at about the 12,951 area. Let me just make sure. 12, yeah, 12,951. Now, again, you're using that as a guideline as price moves up and down. But if price fails to hold that area, then... The NQ had formed a new profile yesterday. So if this level fails as support, then we should see a move back to 12,740, the bottom of its daily profile. Now, the Dow itself does not have a topping pattern. In order to generate that, it needs to generate a bearish reversal candle. Yesterday was um, you know, a small bodied candle. It makes it pretty easy today for that to occur. Um, the Dow Diamonds actually do have a sell the D point pattern out there, but the Dow Equity Future Contract and I don't believe the Dow Cash Indice have that same topping signal. Nonetheless, out here, what uh, the Dow Equity Future Contract should do, much like the ES Mini, much like the NQ, it sh should pull back and test that green oscillator and change line. That's currently printing at about 32.483. What happens if that level fails? Well, the next level for the uh, support, that is, for the Dow, would be the top of its profile. That's at 32,174. But again, if this bullish trend is to continue, which I suspect it will, we've had the two to three week rally. That's normal in a bear market. But we have conditions that have changed enough to suggest that what we should get is a two month rally, something that we saw several times during the 2000 bear market out there. And so this level, if that's going to continue, now it doesn't have to work this way. Price can pull back to other levels of support. But what what we're watching here is that green oscillator and change line at the moment. If we should change over and take a look at the Russell 2000, the Russell did complete a TD9 count top yesterday. If you had a bearish engulfing candle today, it would just simply confirm a sell the D point pattern. But the same game plan here. Price should go target its oscillator and change line. And that's at the 1888 area. The Russell 2000 is also attempting to form a new profile. If 1888 fails to hold the support, it has support between, from a profile standpoint, between 1875 and 1897 out there. So you got a lot of support inside the ES Mini and inside the Russell 2000. Each of them, each of these equity future contracts should pull back, test that oscillator and change line. If it is a test and rejection, that's the next buy point on the move higher that should run through the early part of September out there. Now, what we like to see when we see price potentially pulling back to support areas like the NQ, that is, we like to try to identify you know, is there some time frame that seems to be um, managing the waves, so to speak? And there is. The time frame right now, let's go to it real quickly here, and then we're going to go to a break in just a few seconds. But it's going to be that 60-minute time frame. So for those of you that are following along at home, you're doing your own charting techniques, maybe you're just applying some of my tools there, go to the 60-minute equity future contracts out there. My signals suggest that we could see a bottom form here in the ES, the NQ, the Dow and the Russell 2000, each with TD9 count patterns. See you with TFNN. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors C C call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. We got the Dow up 17, S and P's off eight, Nasdaq is down 122. We're taking a look at the 60-minute time frame chart out here uh, for each of the equity futures contracts. Now they're showing potential uh, TD nine count bottoms, but in order for these bottoms, we're in bar number nine right now. In order for bar number nine to complete, it has to be a close below the close of bar number five. If you take a look at the ES mini. That would then suggest. Now this is an hourly chart. So this is going to be at 12 noon. doesn't really matter where it's trading at 11.18. But what needs to occur but at noon, specifically at noon, is a close below 41.26.75. If we get that, you'll then have a TD9 count bottom. What happens if it closes above that? Well, then the count itself will go away, and we won't have that pattern. And there's an A to B equals CD. But uh, that, price is, uh, that price projection for the ES Mini, just the one-to-one -one would need to get down to about the 4096 level. Now, 4096 would take us right back to this prior TD9 count and above the uh, TD9 count breakout area out there. So there's a potential, but we won't know until we get to that noon time frame. We've got that same pattern. Bar number nine is uh, forming on the NQ. Now, the NQ right now isn't really tar isn't dealing with the uh, bar number five, but still at noon, price needs to close below 1309050. If we get that, you'll have a valid TD9 count. That'll then suggest that price will go and at least tag its oscillator and change line, 13.097. If price can get above that, then you're looking at resistance at 13.150 and above that, 13.210. And then above that, it gets all the way back to the highs at 13.389 level out there. So one thing at a time, the Dow, also in bar number nine. But in order for that pattern to form a TD9 count at its breakout support level, 32.700, it would need a close above. I'm sorry, we need to close below 32.743, and you're at 32.794 right now. Now, even though we don't have a valid topping signal uh, for the 60-minute time frame, when price does pull back, an area that can be support, and oftentimes the support is where price had broken out from. So even if the TD9 count pattern goes away, price is pulled back to a level of support, 32,700. If that area holds and price is able to close above its green oscillator and change line, a green oscillator and change line closing above that says we have a rising price oscillator above zero for that time frame, the 60-minute time frame. That is a bullish signal. And then says that the battle for the Dow would be at 32,868, above that 32,981, and then above that 33,065. In the case of the Russell 2000, it is also 
pulled back to breakout support, 1917.40 to be exact. Looks like this will form bar number nine. It's well below the close of bar number five, but still it does need to close below coming into noon. It does need to close below 1935 even Steven out there. So we got the TD nines. It certainly looks like the uh, NQ should or might uh, generate uh, form its pattern. The same thing for the Russell 2000. The Dow would uh, give you a bottom signal just by holding that 32700 area out there. And the ES Mini just needs that close below the bar number five level to confirm that bottom signal. Otherwise, more likely than not, it's signaling an A to B equals CD to the downside with, again, that first price target being 4096. So that's what's going on inside the equity markets as we speak right now. Let's go to a couple of questions that have uh, come in. The first question coming inside the Tiger's Den, that's from CODA. And what CODA wants to take a look at is uh, Bitcoin. The question is, is Bitcoin a short? I believe that's the question. So let's go to our three panel a chart here, take a look at daily, weekly, and monthly time frame. So, Coda, when we take a look at Bitcoin, now I'm looking at the Bitcoin futures contract. So, that currently is the August contract that is, uh, uh, that is the lead contract here. And what we can see is that, so the question is, is, is a short. I don't know what time period, if it's a major uh, signal that you're looking for, but what price did yesterday was it got up and it tested res uh, 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 resistance. That was the top of its daily profile. That resistance level is 24,300. Code, it's not as if we have a topping pattern. We do have a bottoming pattern, and that bottoming pattern was that Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. When price right now is just consolidating with inside that daily profile. So to the extent that you want to play to the short side, you've got support at the 21.982 to 21.605 level. The first number was the asset and change line. The second number was the bottom of that uh, profile out there. You'd really need to see two consecutive closes below 21.605, at least at that stage, to suggest there's something wrong and that price would go back and at least retest those lows or take them out. So is it a short? It's not a short from a topping pattern perspective, A to B equals CD, TD9 count. Um, uh, it looks like you did get wave number four. You know, that was maybe last week or even before that out there. So uh, it just looks like a good old-fashioned consolidation. The weekly time frame chart does have a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. So what this is telling you, Coda is that if price can close above 24,300, price should continue higher, um, which the weekly chart says it really does want higher price out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Bitcoin, and uh, thanks so much for the request. Our next request coming in from Nicholas, Nicholas A. Nicholas is wanting to talk about the semis out here. So let me get those fired up right now, SMH specifically, and let's read the question further. Good morning, Steve. Another beautiful day in Florida paradise. Yes, except for all that Saharan dust. It is a, uh, it's kind of nasty out there. I mean, my dar is my 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 uh, my uh, car is dirtier than normal. When it does rain, that's when that uh, Saharan dust really comes down to earth. But it is good from the standpoint that it is a bit drier out there, and the afternoons on the beach have been just spectacular. But anyways, let's continue reading the question out here. Would you please go over the SMH's support levels and uh, went through the oscillator and change line like it was even there on a gap down this morning. Thanks for all you do. Okay, so here we take a look at the SMH's. The uh, gap to the downside right now, a gap to the downside is a bearish reversal candle. So it just confirmed a sell the D point pattern. But as we can see, the SMH is while doing that same thing, Nicholas, what price is doing is just testing support, at least at this stage of the game. Now, support is going to be the bottom of that profile. And the bottom of that profile specifically is at 229.48. Price is trading at 229.71. The actual low so far has been 229.37. So 229.48. So price is tested and so far held support. If price closes below that level, Nicholas, what that's signaling to you and I is price should pull back to its TD9 count breakout level. That's at 225.42. Now, look, this is not a confirmed TD9 count top. And the reason is because the high formed on bar number seven. But still, what it does is it gives us a breakout support level. So support for the semi should be really where it's at right now. The bottom of that daily profile, 255. What did I say it was? Uh, I, I, I don't think I was the right number. 229.48 or 225.42. You close below 225.42, and that says we've got something else going on. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart shows us the sending channel and trend lines out there. The dash lines are the trend lines. The dark, uh, the dark solid uh, line, the uh, same color. The solid line is the channel lines. The difference there is the trend lines. I'm just looking at the top of the wicks. 
of the candles. And on the channel line, I'm actually looking at the opener close of price uh, to establish that. What we can see is price got above that. That was a breakout. That was a bullish signal to us. And now what price is doing is pulling back and retesting that breakout area, something that commonly happens when price breaks out above resistance. So uh, right now, inside these semis, price has held support. You've got pretty decent volume today. So far, you've done 2.6 million shares. Uh, when it made its high, it was with 2.8 million shares on August the 4th out there. So your question was, you just simply want to understand here where support levels were at. And for the daily time frame, and really for the weekly time frame, I think we've provided that. So Nicholas, I hope that helps answer your question with regard to the SMHs and where their levels of support are. Steve Rhodes with TFN will be back in just a few, and I would love to hear from you. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the Dow trading out at uh, 32,842. That's up nine points. The S&P is off 10, quarter percent as a uh, NASDAQ. On 1%, 133 points to the downside. We're taking a look at the GTE. This is for LB, uh, email question here. He says, uh, good morning, Steve. Hope the new schedule is treating you well. It is. Just getting used to it, uh, the whole lunch idea out there. Uh, so I, I, I am enjoying it. Thanks. And I hope it's working out well for you and each of you in the listening audience as well. Can we take another look at the GTE? We absolutely can. Those are the uh, charts that you've got up on our screen out here. That is uh, Grand Tierra Energy out there. They just reported great earnings, but the stock is getting in pretty hard. Is, is this a sell? So what price is doing, if we take a look at the daily time frame, um, you know, it's because, well, we know where sellers are located. They're, they're, believe it or not, they're sitting at $1.35. First of all, um, First, it's reported earnings. So the question is, is this a sell? 
So you're holding it long term. You're hold. You're a holder. Um, you've just got a consolidation with inside the daily profile, and that ranges from a buck fifteen to a dollar thirty-five. Each have been tested. Each have been rejected. You've just got a good old-fashioned consolidation. So when I sell it. Um, I don't have that signal here to sell. Now, if price breaks through support, a buck fifteen. That's going to tell you that price is going to go revisit those lows in the dollar area out there. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, so the very right-hand panel, we can see a TD9 count top that formed out there. We can also see that price pulled back and tested support. That was that red oscillator and change line. So from a monthly standpoint, the momentum to the upside uh, is still there. It's really a neutral signal, uh, LB, and that's because we have an existing top and support it held out there. Um, so you got a consolidation basically inside the monthly, consolidation inside the daily, the consolidation inside the weekly. Price just trading with inside its weekly profile. That's between a buck eleven and a buck forty-five out there. So. You know, there's nothing here to suggest that this is going to take off to the upside. The volume today in it, 3.3 million shares. Now, that was taken on the uh, swing point from back in the trading day, uh, Lee, of uh, so July 29th, which only did 3.5 million shares that day. So, you know, and it made a higher high. So is it pushing higher or is it pushing lower is the question out there. We don't really have to answer that. We know about the consolidation patterns. We know exactly where the levels are that price has to overtake in order for this to get back to its bullish ways. The first level, too close above a buck 35. The second level, too close above a buck 45. The third level, too close is above $2.40. So that's what's going on inside of Grand Tierra Energy LB. And uh, thanks so much for the request. And uh, I hope that that helps you out. The next question coming in from John or Z inside the Tiger's Den. John wants to take a look at our eight panel chart for the NQ out here. This shows us for multiple time frames what the NQ is doing. So we'll switch over to those charts. Let's take a look at the left hand side, upper left hand side. You've got the monthly chart. Now, this is a continuous contract for the NQ. What do we know? We know the breakout support of 1220975 held. We saw one monthly close below it, and then the next monthly close back above it. Says it was a false break to the downside. If we take a look at the weekly chart for the NQ, much like on the SMHs, prices hit resistance. It's descending trend line area. So no wonder it is struggling up at this area out there. I do expect that we will see price take that level out, and then for the NQ to run up towards that 14412 level. As we look at the daily time frame, you've got a sell the D point pattern that formed on Friday with that bearish engulfing candle. The first level of support is that green oscillator and change line. That green oscillator and change line as we speak right now is printing out at 12,956 and change out there. You can see here, John, that the oscillator and change line has uh, been a level of momentum support all the way up. If this bullish trend is to continue, then price will find support at that level. If price does not find support at that level, does not mean that the bullish trend is not to the upside. It says that the momentum that has been in place out here has been stinted and that price would likely then pull back and test the support of its daily profile. And that's at 12,740 out there. So the daily time frame, the first area is watch that green oscillator and change on the second level. If price does close below that, is the 12,740 area. If we look at a 30 minute time frame chart, we really don't have that. There's an A to B equals CD to the downside. But inside the NQ, I can do this. It's easier for me to do this on another chart out here, NQU 22. And I believe the one to one price projection would get you down to 12,935. Although, John, I know you already knew that figure off the top of your head. So even though we've got some bullish engulfing candles that have formed out here, uh, none have confirmed a bottoming pattern. And in fact, you can see on a 30 minute time frame that oscillator and change line has been your deflection point. So that's talking about a move to the downside. If price can close above that level, regardless of the fact that it's not a bottom, that level is 13,055, 13055. If price can close above that, then we'd be looking at a move to 13,089. That's not what we have right now. You do have a 60 minute TD9 count, John, that is going to, likely going to complete out here. The reason I say likely is because price is far enough from the close of bar number five. Bar number five is closed, by the way, and this is the level that price must close below at 12 noon as the, as the uh, clock start uh, strikes 12 noon and that level is 13.09050 you get it close below that you'll have a day uh, 60 minute TD9 count bottom that would suggest at least to move to 13.095 if price can overtake 13.095 then a counter trend move if that's all this is John would end at about 13,210 
The 120 minute chart, you've got that A to B equals CD to the downside, but again, that doesn't complete until you get that. When I say complete, that doesn't hit the one to one level. It doesn't mean it completes there, but that doesn't hit the one to one level until you get down to 12, 935 out here. The suggestion on the 120 minute chart without a bottoming signal is that price wants to go make its move to 12,892. That is the next TD nine count breakout level. The 240 minute chart is suggesting it wants to make its move to its breakout area as well. That happens to be 12,820. In the five hour time frame chart, the level that it's trying to target is 12,867. So I'd say it like this, Johnny. And that is this. Watch the 60 minute time frame chart because it looks like it's going to complete a TD nine count bottom. If price closes below that, then we should head down lower, and lower would likely be those breakout areas on either the five-hour, the four-hour, the 120-minute time frame chart, and so forth. So I hope that provides all the information that you were looking for. If not, uh, just ping me, and I'll get that information for you. Let's go to our next question. That next question comes from Wanda. Wanda says, can we analyze gold? Uh, thank you. We can. So let's go switch over to the Goldilocks charts up here. I think this is going to take just a moment. I know it will take a moment here to uh, populate. But we'll look at that same, <clears throat> same in essence, uh, time frames and set of charts out there for gold as we did for the NQ. And each chart, you know, for its time frame is going to give you a different message. Uh, you know, if you're, uh, if you're an intermediate term trader, you're really just looking at the weekly and the daily becomes noise. Certainly these intraday charts become a lot of noise out there. But we get a good feel for what gold is uh, communicating to us. We get to look at a couple of different things for you, Wanda, in order to do that. So when we take a look at the monthly time frame chart out here. We can see we've got a nice road momentum indicator top. But price has really been consolidating between the level about 1696 all the way up into that uh, almost 2100 level out there. So it's just a good old fashioned sideways consolidation, fairly large range out there. The weekly time frame, what price did was it pulled back and it tested a breakout level of support. That breakout level of support was 1694.50. Uh, now, what we don't have here is some type of confirmed bottom pattern. But remember, I have shared with you that oftentimes simply pulling back to a breakout level of support is a bottom. So on the weekly chart, we're going to go with there is a bottom. In fact, on the weekly chart, there is a confirmed Gartley buy pattern that confirmed all the way back here on August the 31st, that, or August 13th, I should say. That pattern is still in play. So the weekly has that confirmed roads meant to or buy the D point pattern. And what price needs to do is overcome that red oscillator and change line. So on a weekly basis, Wanda, your resistance level is about 1816. We're trading at 1810 right now. See Roads with TFNN. We get back from this break. We'll continue looking at Goldilocks for Wanda. Be right back. This coming Wednesday, August 10th, Basil Chapman will be hosting an all-day live webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time, where he'll be presenting the technical tools based on the Chapman Wave methodology, a full in-depth course on his entire trading system. Over the five hours of live education, Basil will discuss studying and practicing entry and exit points, assessing where to add or subtract from positions, utilizing simple technical tools for holding positions longer, taking bear charts and adding notations, tools, and patterns, as well as identifying identifying three core formations that repeat in every time frame and much more. When you sign up, you get a chart booklet emailed to you immediately to start studying and you gain access to his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $149 value. The cost to attend is only $295 and the full five hours will be archived. Don't miss this live special event Wednesday, August 10th with Basil Chapman. For all the details and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at that gold out here. We were looking at the uh, weekly time frame chart. And so, one, that real resistance level is that red oscillator and change line. And if price can overtake that level, overtake it means a close of 18, 15, 70 or thereabouts. That's then going to suggest a further move higher. So that's a real resistance area. The reason I say that's a real resistance area is because if we take a look at the daily time frame, price uh, is above resistance. There was a TD9 count pattern that formed out here on August 2nd. That was negated on August the 4th. This is suggesting to you and I, and price trade above its daily profile, that what price wants to do is go target that breakdown level. That breakdown level is at 1868.50. Now, if price, in order to get to that level, though, price is going to have to overcome that weekly oscillator and change line. That's why I say that's the real resistance area out there that gold needs to overtake. If you look at a 30-minute time frame chart for gold, it has a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom, but price has been unable to do anything uh, such as takeout support, which would be at 1805.40. So at this stage here, you just got a consolidation with inside its profile, 1805 to 1815. On a 60-minute time frame chart, I don't have any kind of a topping. So I uh, really don't have anything. I got wave number seven. I take that back letter G out there. So yeah, we've got a topping signal and price is also just trading with inside its profile and a screen oscillator and change line. Really, it's a neutral signal for the hourly time frame. 120 minute time frame could, might form a road's momentum indicator top. I see wave number seven as one other top that's out there. The price is above the top of its profile and above its oscillator and change line. For this time frame, the two hour time frame, the signal is neutral. Well, the signal is bullish bullish until we get some type of bearish reversal candle out there. You do have the potential for a TD9 count top on the 240 minute time frame chart, but again, its signal is uh, really neutral to bullish out here because price is above its profiles and that green oscillator and change line. And finally, the five hour time frame chart, just getting back to a prior level of resistance out there. So really, it's going to boil down to that weekly time frame chart out there. Now, Gold should be able to overcome that level. And the reason that I say that or suggest that to you is because when we go take a look at gold price and all the major currencies out here, Wanda, and that's this next chart that's up on the screen, we can see that gold is moving higher in all those major currencies. That's what a bull market needs. You can't have gold rising in dollars, falling in euros and pounds, and somehow expect that gold is going to rally uh, <coughs> out there. It, it just doesn't work that way. And I realize it's difficult. Most systems, that's one of the cool things about the e-signal system, is it does give you that ability to create these um, uh, create these charts that show you how something is priced in all the major currencies out there. And that's really important, especially when you're trying to understand the global flow of capital out here. So right now today in pounds, you've got uh, price trading through a descending trend line, trading out to 1497. That's above yesterday's high. That's a bullish mode. We're above yesterday's high for gold priced in yen. So that's a bullish signal. We are above the high for gold priced in euros, albeit just slightly. And we're above the high for gold yesterday's uh, gold priced in dollars. So price should be able to take out that oscillator and change line. I say should be, but that's in essence where uh, natural sellers are located. And if price can take those levels out, we should see a continued move higher again. 1868.50 being the next target to the upside. So, Wanda, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the uh, request out there. I don't think there's anything else for us to uh, do in taking a look at Goldilocks. Our next question, this is coming in from uh, Dan, Don, Don Q. 
Don says, Steve, can you take a look at TNP? We absolutely can. Let's uh, get, um, I need to get my other charts back to, if you give me a moment here, just do a little housekeeping, get to the right uh, chart area. We'll get to the daily, weekly, and monthly. Uh, we will type in the uh, ticker symbol TNP. Since we're on the black background charts, I can get that going here while the white ones uh, update. And uh, so we can at least take a look at their profile levels out here. So TNP is uh, Seiko's Energy Navigation out there. Don's question is, Steve, can you take a look at it? We are. Would like to hear your thoughts. Possible breakout or head fake. Okay. So great question. And here what we can see is prices trade. Well, first of all, where is price trading in relationship to uh, profiles, daily, weekly, and monthly? If you're trading above the top of a profile, conditions are basically bullish out there. Well, it's trade above the top of its daily profile. In fact, this most recent daily profile done formed below price. That's a bullish signal. You are now trading above the top of the weekly profile. It's only Tuesday. But a close above 1289 is what you want to look at. That would then suggest bullish mode or perhaps what you're saying there, breakout. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, Price is above the top of the monthly profile, which was at 1043. It closed above that last month. And price is trading above a descending trend line. So at this stage here, the Seiko's energy navigation is suggesting that this is a real bullish move. Now, move. Now, what price is also doing, it's running right into a swing point. So the question is, that was May the 6th. May 6th. Uh, TNP generated volume of 351, 352,000 shares. You're only two hours into trading, you're at 151. So it's off to a really good start. So it is approaching that swing point with volume. What that says to us, Don, is that price should at least test the top of that swing point. The top of that swing point is 1390. That's really the level that price needs to take out to then say that we really have a breakout mode. Now, on a weekly basis, that swing point is the swing point that began the week of May 2nd. The volume on a weekly basis was a little over a million shares. So you got to come back to this on Friday, Thursday, Friday to see what the volume matrix is. But we know on a daily price is pushing with volume to the upside should at least go test that high out there. And if we can take that out, that suggests that this is the real move and not a fake out. Let's go take a look at those white background charts. Now that we've got those populated, just looking for any kind of a topping signal. And voila, we don't have one. We don't have one whatsoever. Uh, so this looks good and price well above its green oscillator and change line. Now, Don, on a pullback, an entry area into this could be that green oscillator and change line. That's currently at about $12.53. The weekly time frame, not much more for us to add there. No topping signal, just price testing that prior swing point level. And on a monthly time frame, no topping signal there either. You just got a nice bottom. That was a Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom on a monthly. It was a TD9 count bottom on a monthly. It was a Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom on the weekly, the same on the daily. So TNP looks pretty uh, good, Don. And uh, But to answer your question, is this a head fake? Really won't know until price closes above that uh, swing point that it is trading into from a daily standpoint with volume. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in and have a, a terrific uh, Tuesday. I think we've gotten through all of the uh, requests out here. So that is a, a beautiful thing. Um, so what do we want to do next with our next minute out here? Let's go take a look at what's going on in the uh, general markets out here. So let's just switch back. Oh, you know what we should do? Forget about that idea. Let's go take a look at Apple. So, we, yeah, we're on the white background charts. Why? Because, you know, with regard to these tops out here and trying to understand where is price likely going to pull back to, we should probably take a look at Apple, which is trading up 62 pennies, buck sixty-five forty-seven. Now, on a daily time frame, what Apple did uh, yesterday was it confirmed a TD9 count top. So that pattern is going to complete today. Again, when you have any kind of a topping pattern, uh, what price should do is go test that oscillator and change line. And in this case here, that's at 162.80. So if price tests and rejects that level, then what happens is we have a neutral signal for Apple. Now, Apple, uh, let me see, where is the top of that daily profile? That's where the sellers would be. If you give me a moment out here, I believe they're just at the 157.22 area. They are. So uh, price is well above the top of its daily profile, above its green oscillator and change line. Its signal, even though it's got a TD9 count top, is um, a signal is uh, is neutral. If you look at that weekly time frame chart, no wonder Apple is struggling, trading right into its bearish structured profile. The sellers are in the 163.75 to 167.64 level. You close above 167.64, you're headed to 171.53. Steve Rhodes with TFNN.
We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We got the uh, charts here for SWIM, S-W-I-M, up on our uh, screen right now. We can see that yesterday price closed above the top of its bearish structure daily profile. Today would be day number two. If price can close back above 595 as we come into the close, Dan, that's a suggesting a change in trend. Now, that change in trend would then suggest that price would move up to the 882 level out there. Um, if, price, uh, if price does not do that, close above 595 that is you could get a run all the way back down to the bottom of that profile if there was a close below 564 today that's the center of its slightly bearish structured profile then dan the signal to us would be price is going to go target support five dollars and 23 cents i don't have a bottom pattern let me just make sure of that uh, it's close let me see here that low is 571 where was this close Close was uh, 549. Yeah, so there is no bottom pattern out here. Needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And uh, man, this is ugly when you take a look at the monthly chart. Nobody in this is uh, in a uh, really is in a winning position out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at. Uh, that's what I see when we take a look at uh, swim out there. Uh, real quickly, let's go back. Take a look at the. Uh, the daily equity future contracts out here. Again, our thoughts are right now that what price should do is pull back and test those green oscillator and change lines. And if those levels hold, the oscillator and change line is acted as support 
for the last uh, couple of months out here, almost the last couple of months, that is really the next buy point and signals a move with us moving up into the uh, September time frame. And if we change over, take a look at the Dow charts. We took a look at a couple charts where price was testing their descending channel and trend line areas out here. I believe the Dow is going to do the same thing. And if we take a look at the either the daily time frame, that's the very right-hand chart, or the weekly time frame, it's got those uh, trend channels in there. Price should target the 33,755 area to 34,007 as we get into the September time frame. Folks, stay tuned. Uh, you've got uh, great programming for the rest of your day, and I will see you again tomorrow, 11 o'clock sharp. Have a terrific Tuesday. We'll see you on Wonderful Wednesday, folks.